What's up guys, welcome back to a new Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a ton of new cards that have been recently datamined from the latest update. Huge, huge shout out to XOF and Dragon for datamining um, all these cards. They're amazing, huge shout out to them. We're going to be talking about all these different cards, and there is a ton of cards in this um, imagery link that I'm going to be showing you guys. So sit down for a long haul, because I'm just going to do this all in one take, because I don't really have the time to like split these up into different uploads. So I'm just going to do a one just long one take, checking out all these cards individually for you guys. So hope you guys have fun. Be sure to open up your dual links and start grinding the Jesse event while you're hearing me talk about all these new cards. Let's get on to it. For anybody that does, um, is curious though, one thing is is that in the description I'll be putting down timestamps on each of the cards because there's a lot of different archetypes in this uh, list so go check in the description if you guys are looking for a specific archetype that you want me to just check out instead of having me wait through the whole thing so be sure to do that so yeah most of these cards not every single one of these cards but most of these cards are going to be in this main box is going to be coming out soon, the Valiant Souls. Valiant Souls is going to be the next main box in here. We have a couple confirmed cards um, from this box guarantee that are like from this list that I'm going to be reading. As you guys can see in the artwork, there's a couple cards in here that are guaranteed to be in this box. So we're going to be talking about them. But this box is looking really spicy because it mainly seems to have to do with a lot of hero support. When it comes to elemental hero, vision heroes, mask heroes, a lot of cool stuff from there. There might be some Paleozoic cards, if you guys know that, from the TCG that are going to be in here it's gonna be a lot of fun so let's just get right onto it so first of all we're gonna be talking about these uh fabled cards i have never heard of these cards before so these are gonna be all new to me but let's just get right onto it so fabled solicus is an sr light six star fiend with the effect if this card is in your graveyard you can send two cards except fabled solicus from your hands to the graveyard and special some of this from the graveyard that's pretty cool right there so if you, so there's going to be certain da I mean, it is a fiend card, so there's a lot of different fiend archetypes in the game that are going to allow you to send cards like uh, this card specifically into the graveyard. So there might be some combos, and then if we keep looking through these fabled cards, there might be combos and sending them into the graveyard in the first place. Uh, next up, we got a fabled uh, Garbus. Um, you can, this is a fiend with the effect. You can discard one card to the graveyard to select and destroy one face of monster your opponent controls with defense less than or equal to this card's attack. That's pretty interesting right there. So, 1500 isn't the worst thing in the world. It can take out uh, certain monsters. Just more on the boss monster side of things, it's going to be hard to take out monsters with Fabled um, Garablast. But so that's really spicy right here. You can stop uh, combos pretty early on with this. And this card's going to be easily able to discard uh, Soul Kiss. So that's actually really cool. I already see the combos with this deck, and I'm kind of interested to see how this card's going to, or this deck's going to work out in the future. Next up, we got the uh, Fabled Corrector. Don't know how to pronounce that. This is a four star light beast with the effect. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by balance, sends it to the graveyard, you can discard one Fabled monster and draw one card. Very nice right there. 1700 attack isn't the worst thing in the world, but I kind of wish it was better. But so you can destroy a decent amount of monsters with 1700 attack. And yeah, there's some like random beasts. I think Beast Rising could potentially work with this card, but then again, I would want to see more beast cards for, uh, for the Fables in this. But still, really cool nonetheless. This Fabled archetype seems super cool. Uh, next up, we got the Fabled uh, Garisha. I'm going to have to search up this card on Google because all the text is covered up uh, on here. So, yeah, I'm going to have to be pausing a lot in the video to search up cards uh, for you guys doing this all live. So, yeah, let's go check out this card right here. Another one of the Fabled's. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited for this main, or this next main box. Super exciting. So we're going to be checking out this card. So what this card's effect is, so this is a three-star light beast with the effect. When this card is discarded to the graveyard, special summon it. If this card is special summoned this way, it gains 200 attack and is removed from play to once it's removed from the field. Very interesting right there. So yeah, you can, um, so yeah, if you combo it with certain stuff like uh, Fabled Garabras and the Fabled uh, Cock, or yeah, the Cocketer, don't know how to pronounce that, but if you combo this card with those two, you get to get the benefit um from discarding fable gunsha for those two other fabled monsters effects and you can special summon uh gunsha back from the graveyard so you're not really losing any resources at the end of the day so that's actually really cool next up we got this guy this guy's looking pretty spicy over here uh let's go check out uh this fabled monster very cool yeah, these Fabled cards look really cool. I'm really excited for them. I'm hoping they're in the main box because most of these seem to be rares and 
um, only one SR so far. So this is a light 8 star feed with the effect. You can tribute some of this card in face up attack position by tributing one Fable monster. Super easy right there. Uh, once per turn, the effect of the first normal spell card in your opponent activates becomes your opponent discards one card. Wait, let me read this. So yeah, once per turn, the effect of the first normal spell card your opponent activates becomes your opponent discards one card. Oh, interesting. And your opponent means the controller of this monster. Oh, okay. So this is very interesting. So each time you, your opponent activates um, a spell card, what fabled, uh, what this fabled, like Dan, I don't know. We're going to call it Deanne or whatever. Uh, basically, it tells you, the player, the person that you're playing this card with, to discard a card, which is pretty um, good because this deck kind of likes to be discarded to pop off with their effects. That's really interesting right there. So if your opponent activates a spell, you get a free way to discard. That's very interesting. I wonder if anybody's going to build a Dark World deck along with Fabled. Bro, a Dark World deck with like Dark Flare Dragon? That'd be super cool. That'd be really cool. Next up, we got a Fabled uh, Diff. This is a fiend with the effect, or this is a three-star light fiend with the effect. When a Fabled monster is sent from the hand to the graveyard, you contribute this card to select that monster and special summon it from the graveyard. Uh, so... Uh, so if this is face up on the board and you uh, discard like one of your boss monster fables, you can special summon it back with this card by tributing it. Very cool. Next up we got fabled Arustros. That card looks really interesting. The artwork is like kind of like eerie a little bit. Uh, this is a four star light fiend with the effect. While you have two or less cards in your hand, all face up fabled monsters you control gain 400 attack. Okay, that's going to really help out this deck. So yeah, you really want to have barely any cards in your hand. And this is this card's going to definitely help out giving you the edge on all your other Fables. Because I was kind of disappointed with the Fables on their attack. But if you get this guy on the board with two or less cards in your hand, all Fables monsters, including this one, is going to have uh, 400 extra attack. So that's going to be pretty deadly. This deck is looking a lot of fun. Okay, so next up we have one of the first elemental um, hero cards from this new box. Now, this card is, right here is actually the cover art of this uh, new main box. And I don't remember the exact name of the main box yet because I haven't read it uh, a ton. But yeah, this is the main card from the box. This is Elemental Hero Plasma Vice. This is an Earth 8-star monster with the uh, effect. So this is a Warrior Fusion effect. And to fusion summon this card, you're going to need Elemental Hero Sparkman and Elemental Hero Blade Edge. That also confirms that Elemental Blade Edge is in this box. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this card must be fusion summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. If this card attacks the defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. That's not bad at all. Too bad this card only seems to have 2600 uh, attacks, so piercing damage is not going to be too, too crazy. But still, piercing damage is not bad. Um, also, you can discard one card at a target one attack position your opponent controls and destroy that target. That's a really good effect right there. I really like that second effect. So, yeah, you discard and you destroy an attack position monster. Not too bad. This card has 2600 attack and 2300 defense. Really cool elemental hero right there. Next up, we got some masked, masked heroes. Really excited about these guys. I never played Masked Heroes before, so these guys are going to be all new to me, which is really cool. I really like some of these cards. So we're going to be checking out this Masked Hero. And yeah, let's go check this out real quick. Just pulling up the uh, card image so I can read uh, the text for you because this card has a lot of text. It has a lot of text. So yeah, this is a UR Masked Hero. To fusion summon this uh, monster, you need to be. So it says you must be special summoned with Mask Change and cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card can attack your opponent directly, but when it does, if so, using the fact the battle damage inflicted to your opponent is half. So it's going to be 1400 direct uh, damage since this card has 2800 attack. Which isn't that bad to be honest. It's not the worst, especially in this meta or in this game where we have a minimum of uh, our starting, not a minimum, a starting life point total of 4,000 life points. That direct damage of 1,400 could definitely sneak in a win. I could definitely see that. Another thing too is that when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can um, add one change quick play spell card from your deck to your hand. You can use this uh, effect of Mass Hero in key once per turn. So we're gonna have to look at some of the masked uh, or the change quick play spells that are gonna be later on in this box. So I'm not sure how good that second effect is. But due to the fact that mass change is kind of the cards that you're going to be using to fusion some of these guys anyways, or special summon at least, 
Um, definitely going to be an interesting uh, ability right there. By the way, this is a dark monster with eight stars. Next up, we're going to be talking about Elemental, um, not Elemental Hero, Mass Hero Goka. So this is a six star fire warrior fusion with the effect. Must be special summoned with mass change. It cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card gains 100 attack for each hero monster in your graveyard. That's actually not too bad. 2200 attack along with each hero monster in your graveyard. It gains um, 100 attack. I could definitely see this working out really well. And it also is a six star. So maybe someone can build a beat down deck to get that little uh, bit of more damage with this card, I don't know, but still, I really like that effect, it's, uh, you can easily get a bunch of heroes in the graveyard, like, Destiny heroes have been shown to do a really good job of sending themselves to the graveyard, so, you could play Mass Hero Goka along with, uh, Destiny heroes, but then again, I haven't read Mass Change yet, so, uh, I'm not too sure on what the specific requirements are for Mass Change. Next up, we're gonna be checking out Mass Hero Vapor. Dang, bro, this guy's a vapor, bro. Uh, this is a six star water fu warrior fusion with the effect must be special summoned with Mass Change. It cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card cannot be destroyed by card effects. That's pretty good. The only downside is it can still get destroyed by stuff like, uh, mirror wall or wall disruption now technically it's not getting destroyed by those traps but like those traps lower the attack points of vapor so when its attack points you know of course are lower than your opponent's monster it gets killed by your opponent's monster so can't protect it from uh stuff like wall disruption and mirror wall but still not a bad effect can't be destroyed by card effects it's still a really good effect so yeah i like that this guy is not too bad Next card we're going to be talking about is Elemental Hero Blade Edge. What a classic card. I remember uh, seeing your boy in the anime. Uh, this guy is a 7-star Earth Warrior with the effect. When this card attacks defense, defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. 2,600 attack and 1,800 defense. Nothing too crazy right there, but I believe there's some other cards that support Blade Edge and get him out pretty easily on the board. I'm trying to remember that, but so Blade Edge is a really cool card. I like it. Next up, we got uh, Elemental Hero Ice Age. Very cute looking hero boy, that's for sure. Definitely. So let's go check out uh, what this card's effect is. I'm gonna go Google this one real quick. I have never seen this uh, hero monster before. He kind of reminds me of oh, Elemental Hero Lilith because it's like kind of like a younger version of the monsters. Because I believe, I believe Elemental um, Hero Ice Age actually has like a uh, mast, you no, know, like some Elemental Hero Fusion monster form of it. So. I believe, yeah, this is like the younger version of the guy, like Elemental Hero Lulos. Anyways, let's get on to this card. So this is a three-star water warrior with the effect. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, you can target one set card your opponent's spell and trap card zone and destroy this target. Once per turn to your main phase one, you can discard one card, and this card can attack your opponent directly. Very cool right there. So you're going to deal 800 attack points, and um, if you do direct attack, you can... Target one set card your opponent's uh, spell and trap cards on destroyed. So nothing too crazy right there, but the effect's pretty solid. But I don't know. There's gonna have to be some other like effects that I just don't know of about the elements of the hero. So let's move on though and see if there's anything else here. This card is interesting. So this card is guaranteed to be in this box. It is on the um, box art or like one of the featured cards from here, so we're gonna be go checking this card out. This is a vision hero I have never heard of, and this is one of the most unique like hero cards I've seen too, because it like doesn't look like a hero monster, but you can still kind of tell it is. So yeah, let's go. Um, I believe this is the effect. Come on. Let's do this. Sorry for the pause. Yeah, so elements are not elemental hero. Vision Hero Witch Raider is an 8 star dark warrior with the effect to tribute summon this card face up. You need to tribute traps you control as well as monsters. Yeah, that definitely gives the indicator that Paleozoics are definitely coming in this box. Uh, when this card is normal summon, you can destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls. You cannot special summon uh, monsters during your turn you activate this effect, except for hero monsters. Uh, and to in dual links, that doesn't really matter. We don't have synchros, XYZ, pendulums, or links yet, so that's not that big of a deal. And yeah, that's really cool that when you normal summon this guy, you can destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls. That's actually really good. This card has 2700 attack and 1900 defense. It also is a dark monster. No, Vision Hero Witch Raider, pretty cool. I like it. There we go. So we got Mask Change. Let me go uh, Google Mask Change real quick. Uh, mask Change. Hopefully Yu-Gi-Oh pops up. There we go. Um, so yeah, let's go check out Mask Change real quick. 
Spicy, spicy, spicy. So mass change is a quick play uh, spell. Target one hero monster you control and send it to the graveyard. Also after that, if it left the field by this effect, special summon one mass hero monster from action deck with the same attribute as the set monster had it um, had when it was on the field its original attribute if face down. Very cool. Okay, so that gives me a huge indicator on certain combos. So what are all the let's go scroll up real quick and see all the other mask heroes so we have a water we have mask hero uh vaporous so we have so if you want to get this guy out you're going to, have to use master change and an atra uh, water attribute goka's got to be fire so one comp you can do is like blaze man you can use blaze man with goka pretty cool right there and then we also have mask hero so mask hero inky is probably going to help out with destiny hero decks possibly you can use uh the destiny heroes to summon this guy so very cool right there the mass hero inky very cool along with mass change so that's a good thing to know i wish that uh, mass change was higher up on here so i can like kind of know what it's all about but still it's all good next up we're going to be uh taking a look at parallel world fusion so you get the fusion summon one elemental hero fusion monster from uh, extra deck by shuffling banished fusion materials listed on to you listed on it into your deck you cannot special summon monsters except uh by this a card effect during the turn you activate this card so i can't really remember like on top of my head what cards we currently have in the game that banish our elemental heroes uh when it comes to, like fusions and stuff like that but i don't know maybe this card could definitely see some play who knows Next up, we're going to be taking a look at Mass Charge. This is basically like Fusion Recovery, but for our Mass Heroes. All, all it says is that you target one hero monster, one change, quick place spell card in your graveyard, and add them back to your hand. Nothing too crazy right there. It's basically like a Fusion Recovery, except specifically for uh, the Mask Change uh, decks. Now, this card is interesting. So, we got some Ninja Support, which is uh, pretty wild. Now, this card's name is really weird. I don't know what this is going to be in the next main box, but it could potentially happen. Let's go to uh, my boy Ninja, and it is 399 Sandstack. This guy is interesting, but who knows? Maybe ninjas are going to be coming back into the meta. It's been a while since we've seen nin ninjas in Duel Links, so I'm kind of curious on this. Let's go check this guy out. So yeah, Nar Kara Ninja MDL 399. This is a Earth 3-star machine with the effect this card must attack if able. If this uh, face-up attack position card is selected as attack target, change it to defense position. When this card is flipped face up, select one face of monster on the field and send it to the graveyard. During the turn this card's flipped up, it can attack your opponent directly. That is really interesting right there, so I can kind of see why it's a UR because it has a ton of different uh, utilities with it. Very cool card. I'm not sure any combos I can think of on the top of my head when it relates to this card, but still, it's really cool nonetheless. Uh, next up, we're going to be seeing this guy right here. So this is kind of the same. It's named like Kara sort of cards, except that it is has eight yeah it has um eight one eight let's go check out this guy too so yeah these ninja guys are no this is not even a ninja it's actually a muso so it can't combo with any of the ninjutsu cards it seems like interesting interesting so we're gonna go take a look at this card almost got it pulled up Okay, so this guy is a 4-star Earth Machine with the effect. This card must attack if able. When this uh, face-up attack position card selects as attack target, changes to defense position. If this card attacks, changes to defense position at the end of the battle phase. So this card's interesting because this seems to be one of the first 2100 4-star monsters that we got in, in Duel Links. Because we don't have Goblin Attack Force yet. Goblin Attack Force is like 2300, and then if it attacks, you switch it to defense position. But uh, Hoppa right here is going to be our 2100 Beat Stick. We have to switch it to the defense position. So very cool right here. And the only downside though is that it has to attack. So if you're going to play this card, you really, you know, you're 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 going to attack. That's what's going to happen. Uh, let's go check out this guy. So it seems like we have a whole new archetype when it comes to these guys. These Kara cards, which is really cool. So let me go search up uh, this boy real quick. 1318. I've never heard of this archetype before, so it seems interesting. I'm just kind of disappointed that um, there's so far there's only one of them that's a ninja monster. Kind of don't see the point of that, so you... I don't know, people are going to really combo ninja traps with that card, but you never know. This guy is a 4-star earth machine with the effect it must attack if able, and when it's in attack position, uh, when it's in face-up attack position and declare and select as attack target, you can change its defense position. If another uh, Kara monster is on the field, it's destroyed, this card gains 400 attack. That's not too bad since it has 1800 attack, so very cool right there. Nothing too crazy. We also have another uh, Kara. This one is also a ninja one, so that's cool. 
We also have another uh, Ninja Karo card, so maybe there'll be uh, some use of the Ninjutsu Traps. This guy, though, is 7749. Very interesting. Yeah, I never heard of this archetype before. I, like, never seen it. And a lot of the images on Google are kind of, like, old. Anyways, this is the five-star Earth Machine with the effect this card must attack if able. When this face-up card is selected as an attack target, change its battle position. When this card is normal, somebody can draw a number of cards equal to the number of face-up defense position Kara monsters you control. Interesting. This is a ninja guy, so you could probably use ninja um, or a transformation to get this guy got out quickly uh, by using this other ninja boy right here. Uh, the 339 one, so I can see that getting that guy out pretty easily. But yeah, this is a five-star draw power. We also have a field spell for these guys. Cool. And I'm not really looking too much into this uh, uh, archetype. I'm not really too interested in this one. The only ones that I'm interested in is the elemental heroes and then those first guys that we were talking about way up at the top. I forgot the name um, of those cards that we first talked about because first time I heard of the archetype. <coughs> So, Kari Showdown Castle, it's in a field spell with the effect when a face-up Kara monster you control selects an opponent's face-up monster as attack target, you can change the target's battle position, and when this face-up card on the field is destroyed instead of the graveyard, you can select a level 4 or higher Kara monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Oh, I really like that, so, um, so yeah, that's really cool, so when you attack with these Kara monsters, you can switch the battle position of your opponent's monsters, that's gonna mess up some people, and then also if your opponent does, uh, take the effort to destroy Showdown Castle, um, you could special summon a Kara monster from your graveyard and special summon it. Another thing too is that it says, uh, when it's face up, um, the field is destroyed and says in the graveyard. It doesn't specify from your opponent, so you could combo, uh, spells like Storm or, uh, Cosmic Cyclone or just spells that are, that we already in the game that destroy traps on the board. You can, per on purpose, destroy your showdown castle to then special summon a four or higher car monster in your graveyard special summon it so i can definitely see some people doing some cheeky combos with showdown castle okay so we're getting on to a whole new thing so this card is golden gearbox if a face up oh never mind this is still for the archetype uh select one face of car monster on the board it gains 500 attack and 1500 defense at the end of the end phase interesting Interesting card. It is a quick play spell, so you can activate this on your turn or on your opponent's turn if you throw it face down. So very cool right there. We also have uh, Kara uh, Autonomy. I completely mispronounced that word. Anyways, each time a Kara monster's uh, battle's position is changed, place one Kara counter on this card. Max of two. You can send this card from the field to the graveyard to draw one card for each Kara counter on this card. Okay, so nothing uh, too crazy uh, right there. But yeah, you can send this card from the field to the graveyard to draw one card for each counter. So it's just like a plus two, but I don't know if you really want to use this. It might be a waste of space in your deck. Who knows? I don't really know this archetype too well. Uh, Kara Gold Dust. Uh, activate only uh, during the battle phase. Select two face of Kara uh, monsters in attack position. Change one of the selected monsters to defense position, and the other one gains attack equal to the attack of the monster. Change to the defense position until the end phase. What's kind of interesting about this car card... Is that, yeah, if you do get two car monsters on the board, you can, if you don't want to specifically attack with one of your car monsters, you can use gold dust to kind of like throw that guy in the defense position and then give your other car monster a huge boost. So that's pretty cool. I like that. This card's nothing, uh, not nothing too good, but it's pretty interesting. We got another uh, runaway Kara. Select one face up Kara monster on the board. Until the end phase, it gains a thousand attack, but its effects are negated. That's pretty interesting right there. So, that's kind of like a plus or maybe a minus. Depends on which uh, Kara monster you're going to be using. Uh, you can combo this one with uh, the 2100 up here. Where is that 2100? This 2100 guy right here, where it says you need to throw it to defense position after you finish the battle. Well, if this quick play spell, you give that card a thousand attack and its effects are going to be negated, so it doesn't go back into defense position. That's actually kind of cool right there. And also, it's it's a quick play spell, so you can use this during your player's turn. Very cool. So now I think we're on to uh, a different one. Those are all the Kara monsters. After seeing all those Kara monsters, um, honestly, they don't seem that bad. I'm kind of interested now after seeing like all the spells and stuff like that for the support for them. Very interesting. So we're going to be going, ag uh, not going against, but we're going to be checking out this car called Gear, Gear Attacker. Very cool. Let's go check this out. So Gear Attacker is a four-star Earth Machine with the effect once per turn you can change this card to face down this fence position. When this card is flipped face up, you can destroy any number of spell and trap cards on the field up to the number of Gear monsters you control. Very cool right there. So 
Um, yeah, that's just field popping right there, which is very nice. Next up, we have a Gear Mano MK2. When this card is normal or flip summon, you can special summon one Gear a monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position. Okay. Um, yeah, hand or graveyard to defense position. Nothing. Uh, you could get, well, since it seems like this archetype seems to want to have multiple gear monsters on the board, so that's not too bad. Uh, gear a talker. We're going to have to search this one up because he has a lot of text. Okay, so I think I found the card. Let's go take a look at this card. So, Gear Talker is a 4-star Earth Machine with the effect when this card is normal summon, you can add a le one level 4 Earth Machine type monster from your deck to your hand, except Gear Augur. Also, you cannot declare attacks nor special summon monsters except machine gun monsters for the rest of the turn. Okay. So, yeah, you can add another one of your Gear Monsters to your hand, um, but that's about it with this guy, it seems like. <coughs> We also have a gear, uh, Gero MK3, and I th think I need to, yeah, I think I need to search this guy up. So, we got gear, Gano, MK3. Very cool right here. So, let's go check out this guy. This guy has a lot of text. Let's see if he's any good or not. So yeah, this card uh, is a machine, three-star Earth machine with the effect when this card is special summoned by the effect of a gear card. You can special summon three. Uh, nope, you only can special summon one gear monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position, uh, except for uh, Girano MK3. But its effects are negated. You only can use the effect of Giro um, MK3 once per turn. You cannot special summon the monsters to turn your activate effect, except for uh, gear monsters. So what kind of sucks is that you can't use the other gear monsters effect right away. But at least it gets them on the board, so it's all right. I don't know. I don't really know much about this deck. I don't really know what's like good or not. Never played this deck before. Never heard of it. Pretty cool that Duel Links so is taking a lot of old cards from the game. You know, throwing it into Duel Links gives me uh, an opportunity to see all these new cards. Cause I've never seen these ones before. I feel like this is kind of like um, X Y Z era. I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna go check, take a look at Gear and Anchor. Gear Anchor is a four-star machine with the effect: once per turn, you can change this card to face down defense position. If it's flipped face up, you can destroy monsters on the field up to the number of Gear and monsters you currently control. Okay, so I'm surprised that this is actually a rare, because that effect is pretty nice, but then again, that's kind of a hint that this deck isn't going to be super speedy, I don't believe. But, I don't know, I don't really know, you gotta wait till we gotta play the deck before you can really judge the cards, in my opinion. But still, it destroys monsters, which is really nice, so I like that. We also have another gear card, Gear Essential. This card gains 200 attack for each gear monster, and I'm gonna have to search up some of the other stuff. Oof. Okay, so Gear Essential is... Uh, four star earth with the effect. You, this card gains 200 attack for each Gyro monster you control. You can tribute this card and special summon one Gyro monster from your deck in defense position. Very cool right there. So, next card we're going to be talking about is a Heretic Dragon of uh, Sutsuki. I don't really know how to pronounce the last part, but this is a light 8 star dragon with the effect. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be first special summoned from your hand by banishing three dragon type normal monster from your graveyard. Once per turn, you can banish one dragon type monster from your graveyard and target one card in the field and destroy it. So one thing that's really cool about this is that this is going to be helping out the Chaz structure deck that's going to be coming out fair, relatively soon, I believe. And one thing that's really cool about that is that that whole structure deck is going to be really utilizing this sort of banished dragon thing. So having more of these heretic monsters from this, hopefully from the next uh, main box, would be really cool. Now, there's not really any like confirmation uh, that these cards are going to be in the main box, but hopefully they are. Hopefully. Next up, we're going to be talking about um, Astar right here so this guy is a seven i believe it's a seven yep, seven star light dragon with the effect you can special summon this card from your hand by banishing one light dragon type monster and one dragon type normal monster from your graveyard if this face up card on the field would be destroyed you could tribute one heretic a monster instead except this card that's actually really cool i like that summoning uh way of getting this guy out and the artwork looks really cool for this guy i really like how the green like works together with kind of like the yellowish orange it's really cool uh, but yeah this has a uh, 2600 attack and 700 defense really core cool right here next up we got heretic 
seal of the dragon king so this is the gemini monster so while on the field or in the graveyard it's counted as a normal monster but while on the field if you summon it again it'll gain its effect and its effect is you can tribute this card especially when one heretic monster except heretic seal of the dragon king from your hand deck or graveyard in face up defense position pretty cool right there um yeah first thing that i would think of is trying to get uh supervise uh equipped with this guy but it is a six star so i don't know how well it's gonna work out but then again, there's going to be the whole banishing shenanigans with this, so I doubt Supervise is really needed for the Heretic Seal. Still, though, it's really cool. I love Gemini's, even though it's just not really supporting the whole Gemini's as a whole. It's just using the Gemini sort of thing just for the certain deck. But still, I love my Gemini's. And then we also have Heretic Seal, the Sun Dragon Overlord, which is just a 0-0 zero, zero, uh, vanilla. A mysterious engraved heretic relic. It was thought to be a simple stone, but it's actually infused with the power of the wielding, whatever the rest of that is. I'm not going to Google the rest of that, but very cool right here. So we're going to be skipping the No, not yet. We're not going to be skipping past, but we have heretic seal of supremacy. Special summon a heretic monster from your hand. Okay, so there's not really a need for supervise anymore. Um, I'm actually surprised that straight up, like, do these heretic guys. Okay, okay, okay. So it's actually not that OP. It's not that OP. So, with Heretic Seal of Supremacy, you're going to be able to special summon the Heretic Seal of the Dragon King and Sun Dragon Overlord. going to be able to special summon uh, Astar. You're not going to be special summoning uh, Suitski, though. But still, that's actually really, like, straight up. You can just special summon one for your hand. That's really cool. Very interesting. Maybe Heretics are going to be a thing. Hopefully, they're in the next main box. Especially because this main box might be correlating with uh, releasing alongside the Chaz Structure deck, which is going to be wild. But let's get on to some of the other cards. Um, I don't believe Eclipse Wyvern has been talked about. I think he actually was. Okay, so I think all these cards are going to be from the uh, Dragon Structure deck. And I already talked about all these cards. So, yeah, let's go to the Paleozoics. We're going to be talking about Paleozoics. If you guys do want to hear me talk about uh, all the Chaz Structure deck stuff, I do have a video on that. If I remember, I'll put that also in the link in the description. Um, but yeah, let's get on to uh, the boys, the Paleozoics. We got Applya. This guy says, discard one Paleozoic card to draw two cards. Not bad. Once per chain, when a trap card is activated, while this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon this as a normal monster. Aqua type, water level 2, attack 1200, and a defense is 0. This card is not treated as a trap card. If summoned this way, this card is unaffected by monster effects and also banish it when it leaves the field. Pretty cool right here. So, yeah, I'm not really familiar with Paleozoics, but we do got, I think we have all of the trap cards for Paleozoics, I believe. Next up, we got Paleozo, yeah, Pale, Pelez, I can't pronounce it all of a sudden. Paleozoic, I, I mispronounced it once, now I can't pronounce it anymore, holy, but yeah, we got, uh, Paleozoic, uh, what is his boys, like, Canadian boy, Canada, Canadian, uh, case, I don't know how to pronounce the last part, overall, I just can't pronounce this guy, but anyways, this is a UR Paleozoic, and you can target one face of monster your opponent controls, change it to face down defense position, once per chain, when a trap card is activated, while this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon this as a normal monster, um, very nice right there. If someone this way is unaffected by monster. Oh yeah, I forgot to read out all the stuff for you. Um, yeah, it'll be a normal monster aqua level two attack of 1200 and a defense of zero. This card's not treated as a trap and if smash someone this way, this card's unaffected by monster effects. Also banish it when it leaves the field. Very nice right there. So yeah, you're just throwing that boy down to defense position, but it isn't as like a floodgate. Because floodgate states you can't flip it up. Uh like straight up like that but i believe that with this one your opponent can still flip up their monster so nothing too crazy in my opinion not really too sure though i don't really know this archetype i just know it's been pretty relevant in the tcg as of recently when it comes to uh, i think like totally awesome and stuff like that so yeah so next we're gonna paleozoic um el duana i these names are weird. Anyways, this one says target a phase of monster in the field, gains 500 attack and defense till the end of the turn. This turn once per chain when a trap card is activated, well, this card's in your graveyard. You can special summon this card as a normal monster. Aqua type, water, level 2, attack of 1200, and a defense of 0. This card is not treated as a trap card. If summoned this way, this card is unaffected by monster effects and also banish it when it leaves the field. And then last but not least, we got Lichachoa. Um, this one says, target one banished card, return it to the graveyard. So this is how you're going to be recycling your Paleozoics. Uh, once per turn, when a trap card is activated, while wow, this card's in your graveyard, you special summon this as a normal monster. Aqua type, level water, level 2, twack, tack, a twack, a 1200, and a defense is 0. This card is not treated as a trap card. If summoned this way, this card is unaffected by monster traps and banish it when it leaves the field very core right here and then we also have this one and i don't believe i have this pulled up nope i do 
I think this is the last one that we're going to be getting, and it's Paleozoic um, Marzoella. Uh, so one trap card from your deck to a graveyard. Okay, so you're going to be able to send your Paleozoic to a graveyard with this. Not too bad. Uh, once per chain, when a trap card is activated, you guys know this. It'll be special summon back onto the board. It's a normal monster. Aqua type water level 2 attack at 1200 and defense 0. It's not treated as a trap card, and it's special summon this way. This card's not affected by monster effects. It also banishes it when it leaves the field. You already know that. So um, I'm honestly not going to be talking about the rest of these cards in this thing. So yes, it's kind of clickbait. I talked about a full box review, but I believe I stated at the beginning, if I didn't, I'm going to edit it in, but I believe at the beginning I did say that um, not all these cards are going to be in the next main box, and there's a lot of scattered around stuff, so yeah, this video is getting way too long as it is anyways, I think it's about 40-50 minutes out right now anyways, so I don't think I really want to make an hour long video talking about each individual card in somewhat of detail from uh, this list of cards, so if you guys do think I missed out on you know, some cards like these Amazonist cards that we might be getting soon, um, you guys can go check it out real quick, but most of the part, but for the most part, a lot of these are kind of just like, um, a lot of these are just kind of stuff in the game, like I believe most of these crystal, um, beast cards are, um, either gonna be in the next box and when it comes to the dark, uh, crystal beast, but then also a lot of them are being used by Jesse. Um, and like stuff that you can get from Jesse, which is already in the game currently, because Jesse just uh, dropped. But yeah, there's also Lurk Queen. Lurk Queen isn't really that special. That card's not really good. There's just a lot of just random, just end cards that I don't think are too, too important. We do have Fires of Doomsday, though. Special summon two, uh, two Doomsday tokens. In defense position, these tokens cannot be tributed for a tribute summon unless it's a dark monster and you cannot special summon uh, to activate this. Doomsday is actually pretty good. That card I shouldn't want to skip. I don't know. And there's also Needle Sealing Destroy when there is four or more monsters to feel the Destroy. Face of monsters, yeah, but then there's also just a lot of cards that are already like gonna be in future boxes and stuff like that. So, yeah, if you guys want to just take a look at the rest of these, you guys can and go read through them. I'm just mostly talking about the most important stuff and all that stuff because most of these are just a bunch of rares and ends and they're not really in like a specific archetype, it's just more of like supporting and all that stuff, you know. So, yeah, that's gonna, but yeah, that's gonna do it for uh, today's full box review in quotation marks. I guess sorry for the clickbait, but I mean, for the most part, we went through a ton of these cards. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you spot any of the other cards, like real quick when I'm scrolling through that are interesting, be sure to go check the imager link down below and take a read of these on yourself. There is a specific card that you think I missed and that is pretty important. But yeah, that's gonna be doing it for today's Duelings video. If you watched to the end of this video and you haven't liked the video already, be sure to go do so. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more Duelings content like this. Um, and all that good stuff and if you guys want to if you want to see these data mines early be sure that you'll go join my discord link in the description down below i post all these data mines before i make a video on them in my discord so be sure to do so but that's going to be doing it for today's you get doing links video thank you guys for watching and i'll have to see you guys in the next video peace out